Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. We always do these little lists or these things where we talk about our favorite things, but uh, I've been listening to a lot of R&B lately. And I wanted to get y'all opinions on what was y'all top three R&B, R&B groups and why? Okay. And, and rank them from worst to best or third okay. to best, you say. Okay, okay. So <clears throat> I, I'll, take, I'll take the lead on this one. I'll take the lead on this one. So I'm, number three, I'm going with Guy. Number three, I'm going with Guy. G U Y. Teddy Riley, Aaron Hall, and his brother. I often forget his fucking name. The reason why new new the reason why New Jack Swing changed uh-huh. the fucking game. <laughs> and no fucking Vaders. You feel me? People just like with other forms of music and inside genres, people thought it was a fly by night shit. It won't. That New Jack Swain brought up a whole bunch of different shit afterwards. They set a tone, you feel me? And just going and doing research into their own stories, I never knew Guy had beef with New Edition to a point somebody actually lost their damn life. Oh, never shit. knew the beef was that deep. Never knew, never knew beef was that deep between Guy and New fucking Edition. But Guy, on my top three, they are number three because of what they did, how they did it, the the strength of each member, how two of the members were able to still go on after the group disassembled dis- 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 and still have banging ass careers. One of the greatest producers known in R&B, Teddy Riley, who didn't even want to be a front man. He wanted to be Mr. Backstage, Mr. Background. But shit, look what look what he did, and look just from his just from his. His contributions to R and B and the music game, shit. I can't remember how many many years niggas didn't know it was R Kelly or Aaron Hall. You feel me? That's my number three group. Um, number two to me, I'm going Jodeci. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, I'm saying because they changed the fucking game. The way they came into R and B was some. It won't the the classical. Oh, we put the we are put together group. We look like this. We are pretty boys. No, they came with like a more of a street flow to the R and B. You feel me? They brought that that I uh, can you say that thuggish shit to R and B because of the motherfuckers oh. that them with the boots and the big baggy clothes and they didn't see classical R and B singers. They saw motherfuckers who looked like niggas in the streets, but niggas <clears> had <throat> vocals. And if you know about Jody's here behind the scenes, Josie. Mr. What's, what's the producer? The, Mr. Dalvin? That nigga was slapping motherfuckers in the studio, dealing with Timberland Magoo and all the motherfuckers. So, once again, oh, change yeah. the game. But, but my number one, my number one group, Um, I don't know if y'all consider them a group or a band, but I'm going mint condition. Mm. Mm. Classic. Classic. About oh, what, what year you choose, what year you play them, they gonna rock. Everybody gonna sway. Everybody might not know every word for word, but goddamn it, you know a mid condition song when it come on. Yeah, that's right. That's true. The 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 production value, the chemistry of each member in that ensemble, how they all come together. You feel me? If one person's off, you gonna hear it. You feel me? If the chemistry ain't all, all everything, you gonna hear that shit. But to be consistent for as many years as they have been and still pumping out shit. That's my number one mint condition. If you love me, what? Okay, okay. And the funny part about it is we got a lot of overlap on our list. Uh, I actually got three, but I also have two honorable mentions, so I'll start with three. Uh, I definitely have Jodice as my number three. Uh, okay. They're damn near the sound of a whole era of r and yep. They broke, uh, like Faye said, they kind of broke the mold and broke the uh, boy band feel that groups had that permeated the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Uh, you damn sure don't get the popularity of Drew Hill, 112, or Jagged Edge without them. Nope. Uh, they can still legit sing live when they're not drunk at that moment. 
<laughs> and they have hits that were Drop. huge then, but that are still timeless today. And they also gave us some of the most quotable and memorable riffs slash ad libs from the ooh yeah to the oh yeah. Bah, bah, bah. Whatever you need. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, yeah. that's my number three. Um number two is actually the group that was fighting with your with your number three uh guy, uh new oh, edition. Yeah. Um I feel like there was like a drought of both like male R and B groups <laughs> after disco. Like I feel like disco had kind of like broken things down to trios or individuals and then like new edition was kind of the, the the group that like was like okay it's cool to have boy bands again it's cool to have these groups again you know what i mean um they also were one of the few groups where like each of the individuals became stars on their own um they brought dancing back to groups to where it was like cool to dance as a part of the the singing and then i feel like every boy band that came after them was kind of modeled around their formula as far as how they were set up and marketed. Um, so that was my number two. Uh, my my two honorable mentions are Boys to Men. Um, I feel like all out of every R&B group ever, they probably got the best voices pound for pound as far as like a collective of each one of them being like powerhouse singers themselves. Um, they got hits to match any group from the 80s forward. They got songs that broke hella records. Um, they kind of kept the crooning alive during the New Jack Swing and Jodis areas of the other nineties when things were getting a little more edgy. They kind of kept that doo wop and uh harmony going. Um, so that's one of my honorable mentions. And then my other one is uh Faces Number One, uh Mint Condition. Like Stokely is one of the top vocalists in R and B period. Um, and they are banned, so they're like self-contained. They don't need any like outside help or they don't really need somebody else to come in and produce for them. They can write, make the like play all of the instruments. They can they have some of the best tours. Like to this day, their tours outsell a lot of your favorite artists in any genre. Um, so that's my other honorable mention. And then my number one group of all time is Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um uh. as hell but their voices all still hold up. They got hits to match anybody. I don't care what era you from. They got enough hits. Oh. To hit to hit um, almost everybody has sampled them and had their biggest hits from a sample off of them. They're self-contained again because they're a bit they're they're a band. They got the producer writer, the full dance group. Um, and they've influenced every single R and B group that's come after them. Like Ever, to this day, if you do R&B, Earth, Wind & Fire is one of your influences. So, like, their impact is just massive. And you don't get a band like a Mint Condition being, I guess, viable. You don't even, I don't think, get uh the the impact of a Parliament Funkadelic almost without an Earth, Wind & Fire kind of setting the mold that, like, you can have this 60-something piece <clears throat> that all play a vital role and and that can be something that's like viable over time. So yeah, Earth Wind and Fire is my number one. Yeah. The old right. the tell the tell <clears throat> some of these screws out there. Pat, who your top three, man? All right. So it's like a top three. When I thought R and B, I was automatically thinking just the nineties era in R and B, pretty much. Um, we went. If I was thinking eighties or seventies, I feel like I would have been like in a wormhole of like old bands and stuff like that, pretty much. So I just narrow it down to the nineties or whatever because that's the main thing I remember from it. So I have, I kind of have two, three, um, like two lists. Like one, I feel like it's like if somebody was to my unbiased opinion of like music or whatever in the 90s, this first list is, I feel like, defined the 90s, pretty much. So, um, three, two, one. So, it's In Vogue, Jodeci, and Boys to Men, or whatever. I just, I feel like they define 
90s R&B, pretty mm-hmm. much. And then, like, a lot of the groups basically based off of those groups, whatever. Now, as far as personal favorites, because, you know, I'm not really an R&B dude. I'm a rapidy rap ass, get nicked, or whatever. So, as far as personal favorites and being honest to myself, when it comes to R&B, my favorite groups are the ones that I ended up having sex <laughs> while the music is playing in the background, basically. So that... um. <laughs> So, I'm going to make this, like, kind of like my honorable mentions or whatever, um, is uh, SWB, um, as yet, because they got that one song where the dude is talking about mountains and rivers and seeing heaven and mo- moons and shit, and why they making love to her or whatever, and whatnot, and I knew it was a period of time when I was actually getting a bit more active. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was seeing some mountains and moons. No, they just kept playing that shit in the background. So I ended up, I always ended up having, it was like a period where I'll always, if I always end up having, like, get some of some sex or something, yeah, that song will end up in the background for the some background. reason. I'll pay huh? your rent. I'll <laughs> dinner too. I don't know about this. not that one. Soon as I come home from work, that I don't remember that shit. But <laughs> that was one. And um, uh, my other honorable mentions is like seven oh two total Black Street and SWV. You know who definitely I- SWV. I'm surprised nobody said Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Especially, I was expecting Face to go there for some reason. Raphael Sadiq. Yeah. yeah. I could have put that. I could put that on the list. I won't go put them in my top three. They're in the top ten or my top five. But they not better than nobody I named to me. You feel me? It never rains in Southern Cal. That was my one of my top songs. And they, so mm-hmm. we do my top R&B songs. That's going to be one of my top. But for my group as an overall collective, I, I can't see it. Well, what about Millie Vanilli? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you won't fab in them, man. Is that even R&B? I think that's more like pop. Don't forget our number. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely pop. We gonna look like Millie Vanilli soon. All three of us gonna have locked. As long as I don't look like Terrence Trent Darby. Terrence Trent Darby. I know that name. I know this. What does he say? He's like a one hit. Oh, man. Wishing well. Wishing well. Wishing. What is this? Wishing well. Yeah. I can't can't remember that yet. Well, people out there, only brought especially my new subs. uh, Y'all let us know who y'all got as y'all top three. Let let us know who y'all got. Uh, I think we got some solid top threes there, and I like the way Pat even broke his down to like categories of top threes. Uh, so however you want to break it down, let us know in the comments below on whatever platform you're listening or watching on, and uh, let us know what y'all got. 